All right, I'm making uh, shea butter and goat's milk soap. And right now I'm measuring the ingredients. My hard oils, hard oils. It's a combination of hard oils and soft oils, your soap batter recipe. And I, I need to measure them. I'm using a scale, it needs to be accurate. I'm gonna measure everything out. And then I'm gonna clue you guys back in when I'm nearly complete. Because I need to concentrate on one thing at a time. And I have like eight different oils to put in here, seven or six. Or, it's a long laundry list of oils. Um, most soapers keep their recipes secret. Because if you get a really good soap, you wanna keep it a secret to yourself because people like really good soaps. So, okay. And that's a little bit too much. So, I start with my hard oil oils first and I can adjust. I have my recipe right here. Wow, seriously? doesn't like to get messy, he really shouldn't be doing this. I don't want to use my hand to, I don't want to look, you know, it's all over my hands. Not right now. Okay. And you need to be exact. That's the thing because your alkaline solution will saponify these oils into soap. And I have it written down the exact super fat amount I'd like. If I do not follow the recipe, I will not get that super fat amount. So that's why you have to be exact. That's why I'm putting in and taking out and all this foolishness. But at the end of the day, 12.8 ounces. If I am, I'm on the nose with that. So I'm gonna come back later when I have more of this measured out. And yes, you need these oils to make a great bar soap. All right, we're back. We're gonna put our olive oil in here. Yeah, I have to buy containers this big. I have to be very careful. I need to stop. When I get to the amount I need, I can't. I won't be able to pour this back out. Well, you see this is the last of this and I am on the nose. Now look at that. Exactly what I needed. Really? Can you believe that? Well, yeah. Until you guys buy some soap, I won't be making any soap once my ingredients are gone. But you know, these ingredients are perishable so you need to use them.
Okay, this is my infused uh, herbal oil. I've been infusing this oil for some time. And if you saw my recipe, you guys would understand it. All right. Now the next item. This ingredient um, helps make the soap bubbly and harder. It was right up on top. So. Good for me. I'm gonna put my shea butter in last. After I put my alkaline solution in, just to make sure it's not saponified. Even though I know I'm only putting a certain amount of um, alkaline solution in there, so it's not gonna be saponified. But there are environmental factors like heat that can affect things. So. Just to be certain, I get the desired results. I take precaution. Okay, this is soybean oil or vegetable oil. This particular vegetable oil is soybean oil. And I need 16 ounces. I'm making four pounds of soap, so I need a pound of vegetable oil. don't spill your ingredients. Okay. Now I need um, three ounces, 3.2 ounces of castor oil. Castor oil helps make it bubbly. And that's, you know, you want your soap bubbly. I usually buy in bulk. Six degree coconut oil. That means at 76 degrees, the coconut oil is in a liquid state. Coconut oil adds to the bubbliness and the hardness of your soap. This is 92 degrees coconut oil, which means it has to be 92 degrees in here to become a liquid. And if I turn the AC off, it will become 92 degrees. You don't want that. I don't need to be hot. It's not the most attractive method. You know, this, it's like sausage making. Now, you don't actually want to see sometimes how the sausage is made, because that's very disgusting. I do have a meat grinder. And um, in good conscience, I can't feed my family that much fat, but I will go purchase ready-made sausage. It doesn't make sense to me. You really have to have a great amount of fat in sausage for it to taste good. Other than that, it tastes like 
a healthy sausage that I made tastes like um, meatloaf in a sausage casing. It's disgusting. So, of course, we cut it up and use it in spaghetti sauce. We don't waste here. Um, that's it. All right. Our oils are in, aside from our shea butter. So I'm going to bring you back after I've melted my oils because I'm going to make my soap batter and then divide it between the two crock pots. Because it's going in here. You know, it's going in the, it's going in here. My homemade soap mold. All right, my oils are heating up. We'll be right back. All right, while my, while my oils are heating up, this is uh, goat's milk, concentrated goat's milk. Um, measure it out. I will substitute it for my water content because I'm making shea butter goat's milk soap. So here we go. Those are flout, uh, rose petals. There's a rosebuds in there. Um, there's some bot bot botanical content in most of my soap. And that's, those are rosebuds because I have had some infused rose oil <laughs> in the soap. Um, which is included under the title of infused herbal oil. Need some more water. <laughs> I need quite a bit. I need quite a bit of water for this. And no, I did not. I'm not discounting the water. I'm not fooling with the soap calc. It's 38% water. How much lie? I'm not. I'm not messing with those values. I don't need to. The recipe for soap is alkaline solution plus water plus fats, or oils, or butters. Okay. V103 playing all kind of music. <sighs> I hope you guys can hear that. I don't have copyright for anything off that radio. I turned it down, but this is a nice Sunday afternoon thing that I like to do. My children know where I am. I know where my children are and we get soap out of it. There. Finally, enough water. I got too much. There. Now this is the water or liquid content of my soap recipe. And we are nice 
Now what I need to do is move this, my scale out the way. I believe I'm done with this. No, I need to measure my shea butter after I get my batter going. Um, I need to remove items that aren't in use anymore, like this empty olive oil can. And next time it's on sale, you guys should let me know. So I went over here and get some. Now I'm going to have to, um, what I normally do with my alkaline solution is that I make it, because this was frozen so that it, it won't get too hot because it, it gets really hot. And you always add the alkaline solution to your liquid. So as you see, I needed a bigger container. Because my uncle Denver said that he started a, a baseball team or softball team at his, at his work. And that I could come up there and sell soap. Well, I only have the bars that I've showed you thus far on, on Hot Process. That was concentrated goat's milk. From Walmart, of course. And um, so I need more soap. I'm thinking of a whole team of people. You know, y'all hot and sweaty. You want a nice, luxurious spa soap after your game. I'm the gal for that. Now, what I normally do is I make my lye. I make my lye solution in the sink. I do. Okay. You see how the, the hard oils aren't actually melted? I don't know, it's probably too close, but you know, the hard oils aren't, aren't, aren't not actually melted yet. So I need to stir this. Now you always have to be careful of everything. Make sure you don't overheat things. So if I stir this, the residual heat in this container will melt it. to move on to the next step of um, creating my alkaline solution. And like I say, I do this in the safe area, just to be safe. You never know what might happen. I'm also going to use two containers, again, because you never know what might happen. I was a Girl Scout. I try to be prepared for things. And I'm going to put ice and cold water in one bucket. And my life solution inside of that bucket filled with ice and cold water. Because you do not want your life solution to overheat. And it will get hot. Really. Getting this out of the way and making this center stage. This is the alkaline portion of the soap making. Now I can zero out my scale to take the uh, both. Wait, another whole area for my messiness over here. I have the exact amount of liquid. It's resting in cold water. Turn this on and put the correct amount of alkaline solution in there. 
was at zero, I'm adding life to my liquid. If I get this wrong, I got to throw it away. I don't want to throw it away. There. On the dot where I need to be. Now, the correct way to handle um, a corrosive alkaline is with gloves. I have been doing this for more than a year. I know I should use the gloves, but I'm, I've been, I've had the solution spilled on me before. <laughs> I'm, because it's beaded, they're little, they're little bitty beads, and it one pop, a few of them popped out on me. I've also been burned by hot soap. It didn't leave a mark or anything, no. But it taught me to be cautious. Now, there are fumes that come from this. Okay, I'm gonna, um, so you can see. I'll just tilt it. I need to stir this carefully. beautiful golden color. You know, I can only manipulate this container so much. Now, I, I wanted to put wheatgrass and oatmeal in this soap to make it soothing. But I need to learn to become cost effective. My rosebuds, I'm already using rosebuds. Not very many, but just a few. Rose petals for centuries have been used by people on their skin in beauty regimens. And uh, I also have an amount of lavender petals, lavender buds. They smell wonderful. This is a, a huge amount of um, alkaline solution because I'm making four pounds of soap, hot process. And what I've chosen to do is make the batter first and then split it between two crock pots to make hot process soap, my favorite soap making process. Now to my alkaline solution, I will add some other items that will increase the effectiveness of the bar. I'm making a brine solution, by the way. Well, now I'm going to measure out my amount of shea butter. and I want to melt it too. Uh, shea butter and ghost milk soap is very popular because the ingredients are luxurious. They feel great on your skin. Milk has always been used in the bath for centuries. For royalty, mostly. But hey, we're in America, everybody's royalty. It's important to measure every item and remember to put every item. I've made soap and left out an oil and wondering why it wasn't coming together and I had to adjust the alkaline. It worked. It worked out. There. See, I, I like to avoid doing this. This is shea butter. You know, I do not like to do this. It to me is a 
scraping all kind of germs back into my product. I don't like doing that, but my hands are clean. I wash my hands a bazillion times a day, which is another reason why I had to make my own soap because my hands were always so dry. Because I wash my hands for one reason or another a gazillion times a day, and that's I just don't like a lot of dirt and stuff on my hands. And I'm gonna go melt this and put my toys away. so that I can have more room to work. Alrighty, we're gonna add our alkaline solution with our goat milk to our melted oils. All right, my crock pots are heating up. I'm making the batter outside of the crock pots and then I'm going to divide it between the crock pots. See, this is splashing, and I really need to have on sleeves. It's a pretty golden color. I love the color. All my life solution out. You know, back in the day, when people didn't or lived on farms, they did not have access to manufactured soap products. So they had to make their own. You know, a lot of people who live far out, they've been doing stuff on their own, their own law, because ambulances and city services and things like that can't get to the rural areas fast enough to, you know, make a difference. So when you put this, you have to stir it first. So when you're making, but my grandmother, who was in her 90s, she's 92, she'll be 93 this year. She told me that her mother, Big Mama, used to help make her help render fat to make soap, which means you're taking fat, beef fat or pig fat or whatever from the butcher or slaughtering the animals yourself on the farm, and you're boiling it in a big vat, like like Granny from the Clampets. She was always making lot of soap. But the thing about that, to make that type of lye soap, you can do that today. But you need a rain barrel. Okay? And you need wood, hardwood ashes from your wood burning stove. You take those hardwood ashes and you pour them into a big barrel with a spigot at the end. And rain falls into that barrel and makes an amber colored liquid, which is essentially potash potash lye makes a soft soap to harden that soap they add salt which was a commodity so I couldn't see them adding too much salt and you render it you render the fat you mix the potash and then you stir and stir it's a lot of work it was all by hand I don't live on a farm I have made soap in that manner I don't care to continue I did it once I don't like it I do not like it I it's just not even worth my time and effort because I don't want to use it <laughs> I don't want to be bothered with all of that I have done that I've made soap that way now you can't you have to use uh, high-tech gadgets and pH strips to you know find out the alkalinity of the potash and then adjust your soap recipe I don't want to do that I have a seven eight percent super fat soap here this so when you think lye soap don't think Granny's Cauldron from the Clampets, where she couldn't gauge the amount of lye. I know how much is in here, because I put it in here. I need an emollient soap. Remember the, in the olden days, the caress would leave, leave like a, a little layer of oil on your skin? Okay, well, people with eczema like me have to depend on that. You change the formula, we ass out. I'm just going to tell you. I, I'm ass out on, on the soap tip commercially. I make this myself. I leave uh, my skin moisturized. Not greasy, but moisturized. And I don't have to put on any other product, lotion or anything, because I was buying all that stuff. And eventually it would irritate my eczema. I've lived with eczema. For you people on Facebook, knew me at Ernie Pyle, you knew me at Tolleston, you knew me at Horseman. I always got teased about a, a rash patch somewhere on my arm or whatever. I was constantly teased. 
And especially in the summertime, you come walking into the class with ointment on a rash patch. You just ask, you're opening up yourself for laughter. And But when you're, what are you going to do? You either put the ointment on or scratch at it and it gets worse. You can get a skin infection or something. And you know, at least it's scarring and we don't want to be all scarred up. So, I'm glad I know how to make soap. I can make soap that's good for me and good for you. Because if it's good for me and it doesn't irritate my skin, you know it could be good for you. Now, if you have coconut oil sensitivities, milk sensitivities, if you're allergic to wheatgrass, oatmeal, if you're allergic to marigold powders, if you're allergic to olive oil, if you're allergic to soybean oil, this isn't the soap for you. If you have multiple allergies. However, if you're looking for a good spa quality soap, where you can use it, like after the baseball, softball game, and feel clean, but yet moisturized, no overpowering scent, just aroma therapy from the soap bar and the bath and shower, this is the soap for you. Just think, you get in, you, you scrub up really, really good, as many times as you want, you still don't get dry after you get out of your bath or shower. You don't have some granny perfume soap all over your body. Your skin has been bathed in healthy oils and botanicals. Throw on your smell good, throw on your cologne, and you're stepping out tonight. You feel great. It makes you feel good. This soap actually is a highlight because it, it makes me feel good. Now, this is the melted shea butter that I will add. I have it in front of me so that I don't forget because I have forgotten to put certain atoms in before. This is my new way to stir. This is a paint stir on the end of my drill. Don't get me started. see this or not. Yeah, you can see it. Come a little closer. Yeah, you can see it. Do you guys want oatmeal in this soap? I can do that now. I can put a little oatmeal and a little wheatgrass in here just to soothe the skin. Oatmeal is extremely calm, calming. Um, I'm not putting any bentonite clay in it. I'm tired of looking at gray soap. Well, okay. We'll leave the um, excessive additives out. It will just be shea butter and goat's milk, a very simple soap. However, I could put safflower in it. And I think I will. Just for botanical decoration. And this is a lavender bud. Lavendin bud. I like to put my botanicals in while it's still a very alkaline solution so that they can dissolve. Because I don't, I don't want an exfoliant bar. thickening up. It's getting thicker.
want to get this splashed on you either. It looks nice. It's coming along. It's getting thicker and thicker. I want to uh, emulsify this so that it, it's held together. And then I'll pour it in my crock pot. Once I pour it in the crock pots, we got an hour or so before it's actually soaked. The botanicals are getting stuck to the blade. And I'm going to pour my um, shea butter in. I still listen to B103. Her Kent, he's been around a million years. He's playing his favorite songs, I guess. I'm a 70s baby. I like stuff from the 70s and 80s. That's when I was a little kid. I was in high school. Yes, I get every ingredient out. I'm going to use the same container to mix my um, fragrance. I need four ounces of fragrance. Okay. Yeah, it takes a while. Stirring. Okay, I'm just going to give it a chance to separate. Hey! Okay, I forgot I'm on camera. Alright, now this is a pretty nice batter, as you can see. I'm going to start clearing off my area and getting ready for um, crock pot. Everybody, hell. Yeah. Me neither. That's why I'm doing this. We need boyfriends. Maybe I'll meet somebody nice. You got on booty shorts. Oh, so I know they're not booty chores if you don't want to go to church. Girl, are you in a refrigerator? Oh. I wish me, I could get men to do what I asked them to do. I do. Don't you? It's like, just do what I ask you to do. And not, don't give me a whole lot of mess over it. It's like, I, I, I you know, because it's, it's not a lot of stuff. It's just, I need, just need you to do certain things. And then, you know, just go chill. And they don't want to do it. You know, just oppositional defiant. That's... <sighs> I mean, they tell me to quit talking to them about this damn soap, and I won't do that. So, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe I should take my own advice. Well, you know, unless you have eczema, see, you don't have a, you know, I hate to say we're skin disease. So. You know I have rash. You know, I don't always follow the recommended dietary. Consider, you know, in the summertime, you're going to eat more citrus. And if you're trying to eat light, you're going to have more vinaigrettes than cream salad dressing. And that's just the way it is. I'm like, I don't really have a choice in the matter. You can hear this. Oh, all right. Well, I'm done mixing. I just need to mix it up. You know, I would love to go golfing. I love to golf. 
That's what dude was doing. Actually, it's always hot, usually. You, what you needed to not do is rain. So as long as it's not raining, you got to take that opportunity. So it might be extremely cold or it might be extremely hot, but you got to take the opportunity when you don't have, like, severe weather and stuff. People golf in there all the time and drink. They don't seem to pass out. I don't know, they might pass out. We just don't hear about it. Yeah. You know, these batteries, I need some new retreat. All right. Now it's time to colorize the soap and scent the soap. I had to wait until it cooled down about 170. It's a little bit more than 170. This is my scent. I'll put some extra salt in my scent. This is my colorant. And these are my colorants. I want to create a streaky pattern, a swirl similar to this one, just using different colors. Even though the soap is brown. All right, let's get going. I like bold colors in my soap because you don't usually find soap at all my coloring out. It still needs to cool down a little bit and it will cool as I blend it. soap is good to go as soon as you make it but you need to really let it cure by and when it cures it dries out it is it's already saponified this is soap already this little these little bits so <laughs> these are soap safe colorants skin safe bath and beauty products I just, I only have a little bit of this left. Let's do it with water to get all my goodie out. I like blends of colors. They're really cool to me. Okay. Hoping it's messy. Yeah. This water will dry up as the bars cool. Makes it a, a, a fluidity pattern. This is my four ounces of original blend scents. I'm just blending up uh, scents that I ordered from Peak Candle and Supply. And I put a little bit more sea salt in it. And so I'm just going to keep putting the soap in the mold. That's 
my mold right there. Can you see it? Right there. Yeah, and we're just plopping it in, huh? I need two spoons. I only have one. It's, this soap is hot. It's like 170 degrees. Who uh, knows? This cleanup is easy. All I do is add water. That's the one thing. Soap and cleanup is pretty easy. You just add a little water. And you got tons of bubbles. Uh, you really have to, I have to be a little bit more careful. Because I'm not quite done with That's the pattern going with the blue and the green. I mean, and the purple and the green. Let's see if I can keep this balanced. I never said high process soap was easy. I said it's my pre preferred method because I don't have to wait five or six weeks to use my soap. I will let it sit two weeks to make sure it's hard. The harder it is, the less likely it is to melt away in the bath or shower. Pretty much, and then I'll just put water in this crock pot. I got these from the secondhand store because I don't use them for food. You just put water in that, and then use that soapy water any way you want. Uh, 
make sure I'm getting it in the mold and not underneath the mold. This smells really nice. It doesn't smell distinctly female or distinctly male. It's neutral. It, just, it smells clean and bright. Like a wake up. Now I can't see inside of this. There. It's in the mold. That's like the first step. Getting it in the mold. And not letting it get too cool before you um, mix it. And then you take um, a spoon or some type of instrument. Here it is. This mold is so heavy. There, you gotta get the spoon swirl. Thanks to whoever invented this. You just go in, it's still hot. But you don't want to let a, a skin, you don't want it to get too hard. I have a quite a bit of sea salt in here. And salt hardens soap. So, mix it. You know, this green isn't as bright as I thought it would be. I use neon green and lime green. While it's still fluid, you can make a few designs. And if you hear my daughter in the background, yeah, that's, she's in the background making noise. But she's going to have to give mommy in the next 15 minutes because I have to do this while I can do this. See? And you just get your nice little pattern going. Taping. Looks like rain outside. Then, very quickly. Yeah, I broke out in the sweat kind of. <laughs> We're in a hurry. And the soap is hot. It's making it hot over here. And it's already hot outside. Going against the idea of having the AC on. My uncle said that he knows some people who would be interested in a really good spa soap. So, and he loves it. My Uncle Denver loves my soap. He said he did. I hope he wasn't trying to be nice. Well, my son said he, he loves mommy's soap because he uses it. And if he didn't like it, he wouldn't use it. He would be a problem. <laughs> you know, because stuff that he doesn't agree with or doesn't like, he's a problem with it. So, if he's using it, no questions. He, he likes it if he uses it. It tastes good if he eats it, as thin as he is, and if it, he likes the soap, he uses it. He only asked me that it not be too flowery, and I said, okay. Now, I can either smooth down the top, which I'm not going to do, or continue with my spoon method to make interesting interesting 
patterns on top of the soap that will be there when you cut it. Yeah, I'm going to have to go see what my daughter needs. She is autistic. And she was happy just a few minutes ago, so I don't know. And I want to blend my soap. green right there. I don't want to blend it. My goal is to swirl it. I saw a couple of soapers um, swirling hot process this way. Yeah, it's still hot. It's like hot candle wax. I don't know. She probably can't find a toy. You know, it's so simple, the things that she wants. I and mean, she doesn't have patience. So, I will see you guys on the other side. That's my goat's milk and shea butter soap. You saw me color it. You saw me blend it. You saw me scent it. And this is it. It will be ready um, this weekend, next week, whenever you want to buy it. It'll be here for you. Okay, this is Leslie signing off for 1966 Incorporated presents Leslie's Homemade Soaps. Look, it's firm. I think I got this in here. Eight-ish. Um, I don't know what time it is. Two hours later, two and a half hours later, 1034. It's firm. I'm supposed to leave it in at least five hours. And to pull it out, I'll just pull these straps up. Thank you, Nancy, today from YouTube for showing me how to make a soap mold by myself since I don't have a husband or a boyfriend. To make it for me and my dad told me to stop making so much soap but everybody uses it I just need people to buy it um actually uh, she put straps in the soap mold like this and pulled it up it's not ready yet and she showed us how to take um, one by fours anyways Nancy today she planes her own wood she makes soap she's you know extraordinaire and um, I watch her videos all the time. Um, I'm a member of um, a couple of soap forums. I use Soap Calc to calculate all my recipes. I follow what the mature soapers say to do, all of their suggestions. I do. I do all of that. See, it's still pliable. It's firm. You saw it before, it was gushy and mashed potatoes. It's firm. I could, you know, put some more of the soap that spilled out back in there. And, um, well, when I cut it, I think I'm going to keep it in log form. Look, I'm going to keep it in log form and, until I'm cutting it for customers. Because that's, that's part of the thrill, getting the cut and pick and choose how much soap you want. And I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to follow the lead of Lush. You know, I'm, I am in love with that whole concept of beauty products and um, you know they, they cut you off as much soap as you care to buy at the time because they sell so much of it so we'll see how mine will go just imagine some of the peaks and valleys down this is the top of the soap the part of the soap that will be on your body or your rag or your loofah will be the 
part of the soap that I cut when I push a cutter down in it. And find a cutter. So I have two cutters. I have two cutters. Matter of fact, they need to be washed. You have to, your cutters have to be clean, or you'll um, destroy the integrity of your soap. I should leave it alone. But see, this is going to crumble off anyway. So I can just take this, this little bit off. The thing about soap, and you can't leave your soap log alone. I'm in here messing with. Oh, it smells great. Ah, oh, it smells lovely. It smells like sunshine and love. It smells like sunshine and love. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. And I'm going to sell this. Uh, I'm not actually worthy of soap this good. <laughs> you know, I'll use the end cuts for myself, but I got to sell this. This, this soap, this four pound, this mold probably holds about seven pounds. I, I probably could have gotten, I could have filled it up all the way up. But this is almost even with the wood part. You know, this is a good quality soap. And for anyone who cares about spa quality ingredients and soaps, you would you would love to have a piece. So just go to hotprocesssoap.blogspot.com and I'll check back in with you when it's ready to cut tomorrow sometime. It's still warm. So hotprocesssoap.blogspot.com to uh, place your order, your your pre-order for this soap. All right, thanks. All righty, I'm going to rebatch some soap today, and I'm going to cut the soap that we made yesterday. Hot process, four pounds of what was it? Goat's milk and shea butter. This is soap that I've shredded. And this is, I mixed a little turmeric in with it because turmeric is good for your skin. There are a lot of things in the kitchen that you can use to make your soap. I think I'll put a little sea salt in this too. I'm sea salt crazy. I love sea salt and soap. I'm going to just put that on there right now. So on to the show. It's a really big show. That may not be goofy. All right, I'm gonna pull it all the way out so you guys can see. Just watch me wrestle with this thing. Behemoth soap mold. Okay, we're gonna get this. Really? We're gonna be this way, huh? paper cut on my hand, on my thumb, and it's really bothering me. Just start all over. See? Soap mold. Glued it together. Put that over there. These are the straps that you put under it to pull it out. It's really heavy. It's probably more than four pounds. But I made 64 ounces of batter. See, the plastic stuck in my soap. Oh, are you serious? Look at that. Structural damage. Because of this, I didn't cut it accurately. And dog it. I don't know how I can fix that. Maybe with water? I don't know. You really only need to let hot process soap dry for five hours. Okay, well, this is going in your rebatch. All right, I'm going to cut it.
Okay. We have our straight cutter and our wavery cutter. I forget where I bought them from, but I'm just going to cut it right here. Look. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that, boys and girls. That's beautiful. Oh, you know, this, this will be my piece, the structural damaged piece, structurally damaged piece of soap will be mine. I think the wavy cutter is apropos. It's nice. Ah, oh, it smells so good. This is nice. And of course, I'll cut off the end piece. This. I'll use that too. And I will usually just let the, you can use this right now. This is soap. So all of the oils are saponified. But I, because it's still damp, it is damp. I will probably let this go two weeks. But I plan to keep this in log shape and cut it per order like a la carte um, at an upcoming Methodist Hospital baseball game. My uncle said the baseball players would probably like to have some soap to clean with and go celebrate, you know. So um, I'll turn this camera back on when I'm going to hot process the soap. The, I'm sorry, rebatch the soap. I'll show you a, a straight edge cut. There. Isn't that pretty? I'll put that right there. Look at that. Oh, it is quite heavy. I'm gonna cut, I'll cut this off too. There. I usually use a miter box to uh, measure the pieces, but I'm just getting that out the way to keep make sure it's not um, there in the end piece. I'm gonna put this over here to dry. This end piece is good. Oh. Uh, all right, see ya soon. Look at that. Isn't it nice? Really, isn't it nice? All right, we're going to soap up. This is the soap. Remember, we just cut this. There we go. We just cut this. I normally don't use my soap right after I cut it. I let it dry out. It was damp. Yeah, but we're gonna wash our hands with this right now because you can use hot process soap technically right after it's done cooking. Look at that! Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? Look at all that! Just imagine being in a hot, steamy shower with an aromatherapy scent and all of this creamy, bubbly lather. Oh, it rinses off so smoothly. Look how thick. You can shave with this. You can shave with this. Okay, let's rinse. Look how thick and creamy that is. And it rinses clean. It rinses clean. That's nice. Look at it right there. Look how nice that is. And it smells so good. It's a very light scent that's just delicious. It, it really smells good. And it made the sponge soapy. It was so much soap and lather. So you see, this is a very, very good soap. Well, I might as well just clean this on standing here. <laughs> well, I'm going to put this back and let it dry with the rest of its buddies. And I will see you for hot process.